once your mind is organized, and whether you're a Muslim or a non-Muslim, once your mind learns how to be organized, you can use that skill, and you can make it, you, you, can, you can use it to make bigger things easier, more difficult things easier. Okay, but when we're talking about, about our Salah, if I were to ask you, can a non-Muslim pray Salah? Can a non-Muslim pray Fajr? Like he comes to a masjid or she comes to a masjid, right, just to see what Islam is all about. She, she, he or she finds someone praying, and then she joins in or he joins in, and they start praying. Well, is this possible? No. No. no, they have to, they have to does it count? They have to make it count. But is it possible? I'm not saying does it count. Everything I'm saying is, is it possible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, it's possible. Okay. It's possible. Right? Right? Has it happened a lot? Yeah. Actually, it has. Right? There are so many converts across even just Canada. They're coming to the masajid, right? Even if they have no intention of becoming Muslim, they just want to see the experience. I know personally, every year, back when I used to work at a different masjid, every year there was there was a teacher, a professor from one of the universities. Uh, uh, it was a Christian the university, the King's, uh, the King's University. Uh, some of you might have heard it. Every year she used to teach religion, Christ like Christian. She used to focus on Christianity, but part of learning about like part of that course was that they had to learn a little bit about other religions as well all right and obviously when it came to islam they came to the masjid and we used to have a very good connection with them and every year you had about 15 maybe 20 uh between 15 to 20 non-muslim adults men and women coming to the masjid looking at the design of the masjid looking at you know the, the men section the the women section the um you know, like if you, have, if you have any youth rooms here or whatever, right? Uh, see what kind of activities go on in the masjid. They ask questions, right? And we have uh, either the imam or one of the volunteers, they, they tell them about the history of Islam, right? The art in Islam. So that, for example, the khat and the architecture, the buildings and whatnot, and the beautiful, beautiful history of Islam. Right? So we, we used to tell them about this and they used to take notes and they used to learn about Islam this way. And then part of this part of this experience for them was that they would see us pray, right? And some of them, for those of us, for those of them who felt comfortable, they would actually join. They would actually join the people. They're not Muslims, but they they have their own space and they're they're basically copying. No, right? But they're copying the 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 the, the actions. Okay. By give me two seconds, let me sign up. Okay. 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 All right, so where was I? Okay, using Salah as, a, as time management, okay? So when non-Muslims pray, right, we say it's possible, but it's not accepted from them. Why? Yusuf. Because they're, uh, they're not pure in the inside. So there's not, sorry? They're not pure in You're calling them impure? They're human beings, the creation of Allah, impure? Inside, outside, doesn't matter. You're calling the creation of Allah impure? He's on the right track. He's on the right track. Yusuf, stay with me here. You're on the right track. So why are you calling them impure? You're on the right track, Habib. Just a little bit more. Mas massage the answer. We're not talking about physical. No, not We're not talking not even if they make wudu. And they're Why not? What's the connection between them being pure and them being Muslim? Are you saying that millions and millions of people worldwide who are not Muslim, you're calling them impure? Pretty much. No. Yeah. No, that's what yes. you said. Yes. Why are you scared? Say yeah. yes. Yes. Ageless, I mean, ageless, I want to say yes. That. Right? You're right. Yeah. Right? They have spiritual impurity. Why? Because they did not submit to Allah. Yeah. Allah yeah. created yeah. them. Yeah. Allah blessed them with many na'am. But they're not submitting to Allah for whatever reason. Maybe they don't know any better. Maybe they are actively rejecting yeah. Islam. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Tamam. Yeah. So, so what does that tell you about Salah? It's annoying. It's annoying. So what does that tell you about Salah? 
Yeah. Okay, Salah is a form of purification. Okay, what else? Not quite what I'm looking at, but it is the correct answer. Hold on. Okay, very good. So you're worshipping Allah, you're submitting yourself to Allah, you're doing what Allah commanded you to do. Yes. Remind me of your name again. Zainab. Zainab. Salam alaikum. It's a little bit louder. Um, it doesn't make sense if he says Allah, he's praying to Allah. He's not a Muslim. I know. You're right, it doesn't make sense. Right? So, that tells you about Salah one thing. In order for your Salah to be accepted, I don't get You have to have Shahada. You need, you need to direct your Salah to Allah with intention, with submission. Right? Someone who copies the actions of Salah, but is not actually inside submitting to Allah, this Salah is not really Salah. It looks like Salah. It, feel, it might feel like Salah, but it's not Salah. Okay? Here's a question for you guys. How many of you guys, how many of us, I'm going to include myself here. How many of us, when we were praying, we were actually connecting with our Salah? We are actually understanding the, the purpose of our actions. Because be very careful, you guys. The difference between a Muslim and a non-Muslim is submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatest form of submission to Allah is a salah. Okay? Tamam. That, that tells us that salah is very important. Okay? So let's talk about... Let's talk about Salah. Let's try to understand Salah a little bit better. Okay. Forget about the Friday part. I know it's Saturday. Okay, I'm not lost. That was that was a yes. series prior at Mass. Yes. But but that was a different series. That was stories of the prophets. It's not live war. It's not live. Although that's a fluke, by the way. How long ago? Allah, three made more than three years ago. Okay. Bye. So today we're going to talk about a shurut of salah. Which means the conditions of salah. Right? The things you need before you even stand up for prayer. The pillars of salah. The stuff that while you're praying, you need to have or else it's not salah. And then the wajibat. The things that if you if you if you add to the salah, it increases the value and the and the reward of salah. Condition number one. You need to be a Muslim. You need, the prayer should be because of your submission to Allah. Not submission to your parents. Not submission to the community or the society. You're not doing it because of peer pressure. You're doing it because you actually understand the relationship between you and Allah. That doesn't mean that if your parents tell you to pray, you're like, I don't pray for you, so I'm not gonna pray. Use their reminder Right? Or your friends or your teachers, reminder, as a way to strengthen that that relationship with Allah. But anyways, you need to be a Muslim number one. Number one. Yes. Hmm? What does what mean? Punishment? We didn't talk about punishment yet. Let's not talk about We want to talk about positive things today. Five. I said shurud. Like the first pillar, the first, sorry, the first condition. You need to be a Muslim. Number two, Aqil. You need to be mental, mentally okay. So people who are suffering from mental issues, right? They don't need to pray. They don't need to pray, right? If they pray, alhamdulillah, that's amazing, right? But if, if you don't have, if you're not mentally, because Allah created some people who are not mentally Healthy. Yo, you know, no, my like, brother's mostly like, or whatever. I don't say that to our brother. Is not. Is like, he like a mental? A mental he said he's mental. Well, it's not like someone that just like. Yeah, he's mental. Like, 
That actually brings a good point. When we talk about mental illness, when we talk about mental illness, I don't mean going to the psychologist and being like, oh, psychopathy is an illness. So that means psychopaths don't have to pay, or sociopaths, or people with ADHD. Right? It doesn't mean that they don't have to pray. Like, my friend, if I have ADHD. What? ADHD? No, you said people with ADHD Yeah, this is false. Um, allow me to finish my thing, okay? So, there are some mental conditions. When, when we say Akil, we mean that you have the ability to control your actions and your, you know, your decisions. Right? There are some mental conditions where you can still control yourself and you can still understand concepts, right? So we have to, same thing with anger issues, you're, you're able to understand concepts. If I talk to you, you'll be able to follow along. But you can't control your actions. You can't control your actions. You may not be able to control, right? So number two, Aki, you need to be sane, mentally stable. Number three, the age of maturity. Tamiz, 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 right? The age of maturity. Okay, what is the age of maturity? Let me ask you guys. Puberty. Puberty. I know. Valid answer. Valid answer, but. Yeah, mid puberty. Yeah. No, no one will say mid puberty. Uh, puberty. Yeah. If you started puberty, yeah. start puberty at 13, no, then no, yes. No, no. Like if you're in the middle of your puberty at 13, then uh, go back. <laughs> different, yeah, different people, guys, different people start at different ages. But what I mean by that, who can remind me of this hadith? Maybe you guys already memorized it with Sheikh Ahmed. Because I know some of you guys, mashallah, memorized hadith. Sheikh Ahmed, yeah. The hadith oh, seven, goes, seven, the age goes that, this is a hadith for the parents. When the kids reach the age of seven, start teaching them. And when they, they reach the age of ten, no, no, no. At the age of ten, you become strict with them. Yeah, ship, ship, no. Yes. Shh, guys. I haven't heard of this hadith, mashallah, but um, I like the general message of the hadith. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's a bigger hadith. Do you know the full hadith? Okay, yeah. Be strict with them. Be strict with them. Like not beat them at and take out the ship, ship and the stick. This is not the way of Islam. No, no, it's a ship, ship. The shahata, sure. Shahata, ship, ship, inshallah. Yes. You you spelled the wrong. It's supposed to be the wrong. Get your facts right. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, maturity number four. Number four, Rafa al Hadad. I, I translate it as purity, but actually, it's not purity as much as it is removing of filth. Raf, rafa means to raise something or to remove something. Al Hadad means impurity. So you're actually removing impurity. Okay? Hadad. Five, yes, Shabbat. Stay with me. Okay. So, for example, um, do I talk about these in detail? Yeah. Let's go to Raf al Hadar. Right. This is your process of wudu. Oh, must have. Okay. Yeah. Right. Again, Surah Al Maidah, ayah number six. Who can recite that for me? Ayah six. Ayah number six. Yeah, you're letting it happen.
You're mixing it up. Bam. Right? Oh, you, wait, that's not you did the rice. Okay, bite. Okay, so this is, this is purity. Is that at the Najasa? Okay. So this, this is talking about having, having clean body, as in, for example, when you go to the washroom, you clean yourself properly, or your body, your physical body. Your clothes are clean. There's no blood or vomit or pee or poo or anything like that. Clean, Habibi, grow up. Okay, clean clothes. And number three, the place that you pray has to be clean. Okay? Three things. Right? Clean body, clean clothes, clean space. Again, while you're praying, you should not be coming in, in contact with any of the, of the Najasa. So if your prayer mat is clean and you're strictly on your prayer mat, you're okay. But it doesn't make sense that you're putting your prayer mat over Najasa. It's hard. Nowadays, it's hard to do that. Anyways, unless you put it in the washroom or something like that. Okay. Start the aura. Covering your aura. This, guys. Aura. I see so many people. Adults. Even adults. Yeah, Omar, come on. Habibi, stay with me. Right? Even the adults are sometimes not careful with this. And when they make sajda or when they make ruku, you see a little, a little disc of skin. Yeah. A little piece of skin, like when, when the shirt goes up. Yeah. Or, you know, if you're, if you're low riding, the hawla la billah, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your, your underwear shows up or whatever. <laughs> right? This? Right? This means you're not dressed, this means you're not dressed appropriately. Okay? And if that happens... Guys, stay with me. What if your knees are showing? Your, your, your aura is uncovered, which means, so if your aura is uncovered, if your aura is uncovered, what does that mean? So you're in prayer, right? You make your ruku, you make your sajda, and then you realize, my aura is showing a little bit. What happens? You restart your so you're saying that breaks just a lot? Yeah, yeah. You press show an hour on the for good. Okay. Anyone else? What happens to your solar if your aura shows? Yes. Uh, uh, like if it wasn't purpose, uh, my purpose, would it look like be more simple? That's a question, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Come on, so pray again. Right? So we pray again. Bite. For men, by the way, do you guys know what aura means? Yes. Ladies, ladies, if you don't know what aura means, raise your hand. I know. One, two, three. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. No judgment. No judgment. It's not like you know everything. Fight. The aura. Guys, listen up. The aura is parts of your body that should always be covered, that you cannot show to other people. Right? It's part of, we, we call it in English, it's part of your shame. Shame. It's part of your shame. You don't, shame. Yes. It's part of your shame. Right? You should not be showing it to people. Fine. Fine. For men, it's different than for women. Yeah, I know. Five. And you can see the, the, the thing on the, on the, on the screen. Five. Number seven, guys, how many, how many conditions are there? How many conditions are there? What do you mean? Ten. Nine. How many people say one condition? Actually, how many people say seven conditions? How many people say eight conditions? How many people say nine? 
How many people say nine conditions? How many people say ten conditions? How many people say eleven? It's nine conditions, you guys. Hey, nine conditions. Okay. Number seven. Dukhul al What? Dukhul al The entrance for the prayer time. Yes. Oh. <laughs> You see the prayer times on the screen, right? No. Can you pray Fajr, Zuhar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha when you wake up in the morning? No. I like it, right? It's not acceptable. Allah said that, he, he's not going to accept it. Every Salah... Ya Shabab. Every Salah has a range of time. Do you guys know the story of how we know this? Yes. No. No. What's the story? No. He knows it. Uh, you had a question? He missed off my leg. You know Alright, so let me tell you. Jibreel alayhi salam. You guys. That's, when, that's how Allah gave us the gift of Salah. But the, 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 pro, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam, at one time, he came down and he 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 um, He showed. Um, I think it was around the beginning of Asr time, right? And Jibril Ali Salam showed the Prophet Sallallahu the the time for for us. And then at a different time, right? Same thing for us. He prayed, but it was later than the first time. And Jibreel al Islam said, between this time and that time is the is the is the range, the time range, the, the, the time range for us. So every prayer has a particular time range. And the time range is associated with what? The sun. The position of the sun. The position of the sun. You could also pray with your shadow. Okay. Or a candle. Right? So every salah. Every salah has a proper time. Allah says in the Quran, definitely the prayer is is given to the to the believers at fixed hours. Exactly. Istiqbal al qibla Facing the qibla I am a Muslim. Okay. Um, I am mentally sane. I am past the age of puberty. I um, I covered my aura. Yes. I uh, what was the other one? I I made wudu. I I made sure my I made sure I was physically clean. I come to the masjid and I prayed facing that way. No. Is this acceptable? Yes. Yes. If I'm here and I pray that way, no, 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 there is a particular way. Because imagine this: some people at that same spot decide this way, and the, some other people in a different masjid decide this way. No, no, no. Is this acceptable? No. No. They could pray both ways, technically, according to you. Yeah. We decide on a direction, and everyone in that city prays. It okay. Regardless of where you are, okay, depending on the vision. Come on. Last one. Who can who can decide this hadith for me? This is just by the way, this is just part of the, the hadith. The whole thing by heart? He's got it. He, he was the first one. He was the first one. No, I won. Guys, guys, respect, respect the hadith. Respect the hadith by listening to the person reciting the hadith. Just <laughs> <laughs>
Ma sha Allah, ma sha Allah. Takbir, Allah. 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 All